A focus pull can be as subtle as a pinch of salt on your pasta or as striking as the woman in the red dress. And in this video, I'm going to show you three apps that offer focus pooling, how to use each app in three different focus pool scenarios, and which app outperforms the others, so stick around so you see why. A focus pool adjusts focus during filming, which directs the viewer's eyes toward what you want them to look at or reveals something hidden in frame. With a smartphone, you can perform a focus pull manually, but it's difficult to get precise focus in a smooth shot. That's where ProTake, Filmic Pro, and Beastcam come in. These three apps have their own specialized functions and can automate focus pulls, and they're also available on both Android and iOS devices. One of the best ways to make your own focus pulls look good is to study the masters and how they use focus pulls in their movies. So we're going to look at three common focus pulls used in film and recreate them with our smartphone apps with a little help from a few props that happen to be laying around. The first one is when one character turns to another character as we see here. It's also common to move focus back again to the original character in focus. These are typically subtle changes. The second is when something goes from out of focus into sharp view. These may be intentionally designed to look striking. The third is maintaining focus on a character as he or she moves forward while the camera is static. Notice again as I play this clip, and I'm going to stop it right here, notice this rock that it's out of focus, but it will come into focus as our character, James Bond, moves past that point. And we'll see that right here, and it's in focus, and we continue with the shot. And if you keep your eye on the light here, notice how the focus changes as we track the character moving forward. And as he leaves frame, we focus back to the background as our other character comes out from behind. So here we are inside ProTake. Now the first thing you might want to do is turn on focus peaking. It's an option if you click right down here and click on focus peaking. Now if we tap on our focus wheel, as we come into focus, you can see the green outlines to the house on the right and the one in the background as we move in and out of focus from one to the other. Notice on the focus wheel, we have A, zero, and then grayed out right here is the B. So our focus is going to go from A to B. And also down here, we have the infinity sign. So when we go down to zero, this is as close as it possibly can get in focus to the lens. And then the infinity is the, as far away as possible. So to make our focus pull, we're going to want to go from A to B. And we need to set our B point first. So let's say we're going from the house on the right to the one in the background. So we're going to need to set the background first. Let's get it in focus with our focus peaking. Click on the B. Now we're set. Now if we go to focus on our right, we need to get right where we want it in focus and then we let go. Now to make the focus pull, all we need to do from A to B is click on the B and you'll see that it moves as I click the B to focus in the background. Now when this happens, whatever point you set A to B, whatever distance it is, the rate that it will move focus is going to be the same. So just as a demonstration, let's make B as far back as infinity, just about click on B go up to almost to as close as we can to the house and look how much time it takes to go from one to the other. This is a fixed time. It's hard set and nothing can be done about it. Now, if you want to move back and forth from one to the other, we can click and have the focus pull, but we can't go back to our house on the right. We can't go back and forth. The only way to do that is to manually do it, click, and then you'll have to go back and forth and use your best judgment, which will be difficult here on our phone. With our second type, we wanna go from something that's out of focus into sharp view. So the first thing with ProTake is we'll set our B point, our focus point that we wanna end up with. We'll click the B and then we just make it out of focus. We can scroll to wherever we want 
Keep in mind the further you go toward the infinity sign, the longer it's going to take. And all you need to do is just tap on the A to B. And we have our focus pull to in focus. Now on pro take, our third shot is a bit tricky because we have our characters moving. So we need to work with timing because here our wheel, our focus pull, it's a fixed time as you already know. So this is what we're going to do. We want to take the owl from the background and we want the owl to come forward. Notice I've put a string on the owl and I'm going to pull it myself. We want our end point to be right about here. So let's set our B and let's go down to about zero. I'm going to set it as B. Then I'm going to move it further back to about right here. And I'm going to scroll right, let's see, get in focus. But let's test it out first. Let's go from here. Let's see how long it takes for the focus pull to move. If we hit the A, B button, it's going to take one, two, about two and a half to three seconds. So we want to do the same thing. So let's bring our, our owl back into focus right about here. All right, we're adjusted. Let's set the B point. Let's move the owl back to the same position and let's put the owl in focus right about here and i'm going to pull the owl for about two and a half seconds to put it in focus to where we set point b are you ready one two three it's a little tricky but essentially that is how you're going to focus pull from point a to point b when a character or object is moving now here we are in Filmic Pro. And again, the first thing we might want to do is use our focus peaking. And you can do that by touching the A, which is for visual analytics. You have two options. You can click focus peaking at the top right. And notice that everything is black and white. This makes it a little easier to see what's in focus. And you can click on manual right down here at the bottom and scroll back and forth. You also have the option of clicking off. But if you're still in red down here at the bottom left, it's automatic focus peaking. It's not black and white, but you still have the luxury of the green outlines. And I tend to prefer this more. So to make our focus pull here, what's different from Pro Take, instead of going from A to B, notice that we have lines across our focus wheel. Now, what we do is we just need to set those lines. If we go to, let's say, what would have been our A, our house on the right, we can click here, get it in focus right about here, and then click on that line right in the center. And that sets one of our points. Notice that we have another point already set. There's a lot of distance between it. Now, if there's a lot of distance, you can sort of see this arrow down here at the bottom, and essentially you could press on it. And if we do that, we'll have a focus peak all the way back. It's not quite set yet. Notice the timing is about the same as Pro Take. Now, if I just click right here, because this is the next area that I want to go into focus, the, the house in the background, and I click on it, it really resets things, and that's a little bit annoying. So, we're going to have to play around with it. Let's go back to our original house on the right, set it. Now, we're going to have to play with things, and it, we're, if we're closer to the bottom, let's set it here, and let's move it up gradually, move it up. One, two, three, as we come in a little bit further, and then it should work better. Let's get the house in the background and focus. There we go. Now we have our two set points. And what's different here than Pro Take is we can go back and forth. So now we're focused on the house in the background and we can focus pull to the one in our front, in the foreground, and go back and forth just simply by tapping on each of these bars and it'll be automatic. However, note that the timing is the same. If you want something quicker or slower, you'd have to do it manually. Now with our second type on Filmic Pro, going from out of focus to in sharp view, let's go ahead and get into manual control and we'll set our two points. Now, the point of in focus with our focus peaking is right about here. So we'll click on that. And then we can do the same. We can just scroll anywhere out of focus right about let's say here and then just click our endpoint here at the top and it'll scroll to something in sharp view 
On Filmic Pro with our third type of shot tracking, we're going to track our owl again from a point in the distance up close. And the first thing we want to do is get into manual and find our focus point to where the owl will end up, which is right about here. I'm going to turn on visual analytics and there we go right about here and we'll set that point then we'll pull the owl back to where we want it and we'll get it into focus which is right about here now we need to time it this distance is going to take about one this is a lot different notice the pool is a bit different from protate so let's get us get it back right about here the timing is about one one and a half seconds so i've got to pull quicker all right, once again, let's set our owl here. I'm going to get ready to pull, push the button, and I was a little slow. One more time, get it in focus right about here, and I'm going to pull quicker on three, one, two, go. As you can see, it's a little trickier here on Filmic Pro. It's a little faster, let's say. Maybe not trickier, but it is faster. And that's type three on Filmic Pro. Now here we are in the Beast Cam app and notice we have a third house and there's a specific reason for that and I'll show you in just a moment. Now since we're in this app, the first thing we might wanna do is back to our focus peaking. And we can click on that by hitting the VA button right here. And we have the specific focus peaking option here where this function will stay on continuously or if we click it off and click auto, we can have it only focus peak when we're making focus changes as you can see now it's on when I leave the screen when I take my finger off it turns off also notice that here instead of a wheel we have a dial that just goes straight up and down and to the left we have something that the other two applications don't we have the one two and three what this means is we have three different focus points that we can set that's one additional to the others. Also up here at the top, we have a timer. This is something that the other applications do not have and it can really come in handy. So let's give these a try. Since we have three houses, let's use our focus peaking and go from one to three. So if we go to our house closest to us, to set this particular point, we're gonna just tap the one and notice it turns blue, so it's been set. Let's scroll to the house in the middle on the right focus peaking right about here, tap on the two, and go to our house all the way in the background, right about here and tap on the three. Now, notice that we can tap on the one and it goes to our first house, then two or second, and then three, the house in the background. Now it went pretty quickly, noticeably quicker than the other two applications because I set it that way. If we click on our timer, we can go, as it's set here, 0.3 seconds, which is pretty quick and pretty normal what you might see in film, or somewhere all the way up to 10.0, which is really a long time. Let's see what it looks like. We'll go from the back all the way up to three, I'm sorry, to one, and notice it's taking a while. So it's gonna take 10 seconds to make that focus transition, which is right about here. Now, this is all a creative choice, and what's great about Beastcam is you have that creative option. So I'm going to go back to my timer here, and I really like the 0.3, because it's nice and quick and easy on the eyes. All right, so let's go from the house in front of us to the second house in the middle, and then to the one in the background, pretty quick. So what's great here is you have three focus points to choose from, and you have the option of choosing how long it takes to go from one to the other. However, you cannot set the time from one to two differently from let's say two to three. They'll have to all be the same. Now in Beast Cam for our second type of shot, going from out of focus to in sharp view, before we do that, did I mention that our three focal points, one, two, and three, now in blue, they're already set. You can easily unset them by holding down for about one second on each of them. So I'll do that right now. Hold, hold, and hold. So to get our in focus point, we'll go right about here, almost to the zero, pretty much to the zero, and we'll set it as number one. You don't need to set two and three. 
all you need to do is go out of focus to where it looks to the point that you feel most comfortable with. Let's say right about here. Actually, I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. Remember, our timer is set to 0.3 seconds. I'm going to hit the one and see how quickly we go to in focus on three. One, two, three. Pretty quick. And that's our second type on the Beast Cam app. Now on Beast Cam, when we film a focus pull when a character or subject is moving toward the camera, let's go ahead and set two points. Our second point is going to be our up close of the owl. So let's get it in shot right about here. Let's turn on our visual analytics again, auto, right about here. And I'm going to set number two. Now let's go back, put our owl in the distance and get our focus point here and set it as number one. Now we have the option of how long we want to make the pull. I'm going to do a slow pull and count one, two, three. Let's try and put our seconds to three seconds right about, right about here. Let's put it back. Let's test it once again, make sure we're in focus. Let's test how long it takes. One, two, three. All right, looks good. Now that we've tested it, let's go back to one. We're in focus in the background and I'm going to pull approximately three seconds as soon as I press the two. And here we go. One, two, three, one, two, three. While that looked a lot better, you could see that it stayed in focus as I was pulling. So you have a lot more control with Beast Cam. So if you want precision timing and focus in your scene so you can reproduce something like this, then you're only going to find it with Beast Cam at least for the time being. The more I use Beast Cam, the more credit I think it deserves. It's well designed, less expensive than ProTake or Filmic Pro, and has essentially everything you'd want in a filmmaking app. But don't take my word for it yet. You can see every function and every setting Beast Cam has to offer right here. Check it out for yourself.